But I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to our special guest who's joining us today to talk about his trip, um, Mr. PK. Come to the front. Yeah, sure. Whichever works. Thank best you for very you. much. Hey, good morning. I'm. Uh, I feel like Jack Kennedy and Jacqueline on that. I'm the gentleman that accompanied Joan Carroll to uh, Blacksburg uh, for this game. But uh, it was the first trip by West Virginia out of the Big 12 to Virginia Tech, which is a border rivalry, packed 63,000. Their first trip there since 2004, 18 years. It used to be a great rivalry, but two Bulls that have been here five times, these two teams, uh, five times combined in the last 10 years. Thursday night, prime time ESPN. So it was a good target for us. And we went. Joan created a, a punch list and a strategy for this. What she wished to accomplish is to meet as many key decision makers as she could, as early as she could. So we arrived for a 7.30 kickoff at five o'clock and went immediately to meet down here in the lower left, uh, the two assistant athletic directors uh, for sports information who gave us carte blanche, uh, where to go, Travis Wells, along with Carter Brown, wonderful people from Virginia Tech. So we met them. We ran into the commissioner here, uh, Jim Phillips from the Atlantic Coast Conference. The commonality for both schools was that they admire and uh, really appreciated their visits here, admire Steve Hogan greatly, the commissioner spoke about Steve working with him to perhaps move the Atlantic Coast Conference offices here. They're shifting from Greensboro to Charlotte and all that Steve has done. So the admiration for this Florida Citrus Sports, the Bulls, was tremendous. He had been the athletic director, had Jim at Northwestern when they came here and played just a couple of years ago. So very positive about the Bull. Tony Caridi is the Hall or Tom Caridi is the Hall of Fame radio voice of um, West Virginia. What we did is, is actually between five and six o'clock, went and knocked on the door of these radio booths, went and knocked on the door of ESPN. Uh, the athletic director over there, Shane Lyons from West Virginia, had us come into his booth. We knocked on the door and we said, we're from Florida Citrus Sports. Can we come in and talk to you about the game? And they all embraced us and welcomed us in. Um, they also honored at Virginia Tech their ACC basketball championship team at halftime. And you can see Joan um, very subtly took advantage of that situation and got herself a championship ring. I think she had to give it back. Uh, but there she is down. We went down on the field and the power of Florida Citrus Sports. Every time we would say we're here from the Cheez-It Bowl and pass out pins, uh, assistant coaches she got to talk to uh, before the game. Packed house, as you see, great atmosphere. Not pictured here, down on the field. We got to see uh, the two ESPN broadcasters, Matt Berry, who hosts, uh, calls a Thursday night game, hosts uh, the wraparounds on Friday and Saturday for us, along with Lewis Riddick, who works in both major college football and a former NFL player, went to Pitt and also works in the NFL. And they were, they talked about Florida Citrus sports in glowing terms and just, for us to get to, to meet them and represent them and uh, the bull was a wonderful experience. We had a great time. We'll write thank you letters to most of these people. But again, it was Joan's punch list plan to arrive as early as she could where all of these people would have time to talk to her before the press box was overflowing. And there were probably a hundred media there and uh, uh, got to intermingle with them. Thank you. Is that good? Thank wow. you very much. It was a great trip uh, in Blacksburg. Great atmosphere. No humidity, about 61 degrees, <laughs> you know, just, just great. Ugh, there you go. Jealous. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, man.